Hey guys, so I thought I would just do a quick tutorial about adding a PDF file to your Adobe Captivate project. So um, here's a template that I'm working on right now. This is uh, designed to sort of like be a pop-up and you would navigate to this if you wanted to see this particular PDF file. Um, I've got this, it's a responsive design fluid box course. So I've got this large fluid box in the middle that's reserved for where this content will go. And in this case here, I'm just going to go into the objects icon on my toolbar and select web. You might be looking for that insert PDF icon on your toolbar. It doesn't exist, I'm sorry to say. Although that's an idea for the developers if they want to make a bigger toolbar in the future. But uh, for right now, you just need to insert what's known as a web object. And a web object by default will allow you to show a website in this particular frame or field, if you will. And the very first thing I typically do, especially with responsive design, is I'm going to go into the properties inspector and uncheck maintain aspect ratio because I'm going to want this to fill that fluid box as much as I possibly can. And uh, the other thing we're going to change, we're going to change it from a web address to a local file. Now, in this case here, what used to happen with Adobe Captivate is that you would point to a PDF file and you'd have to be very careful not to delete it or move it because then Captivate wouldn't know where it was when it came time to publishing it. But Adobe has improved this, uh, this whole process a little bit and now you really don't need to worry about that too much here. So if I'm going to uh, navigate to where I've got that particular uh, PDF file located and click on open. You won't be able to see the PDF in edit mode here. So your first thought might be to think that something isn't working right or something's not correct. Uh, but in fact that this is fine. Uh, all these settings are okay of course especially if you've got multiple pages within that PDF you're going to want to have scrolling. And on the timing panel, you might want to have it uh, display for the rest of the slide so it doesn't suddenly disappear partway through the playback. Let's uh, go ahead and publish this to my desktop here. But before I do, let's just test out my little theory here. I'm going to delete this, uh, this PDF file and empty my recycle bin here. Because uh, again, that was one of the problems before. If you didn't have the original file in its original location, uh, it would publish and say the file was missing. But if you take a look now in the library here in the latest version of Adobe Captivate, you'll see that that PDF is now part of the library, which is where it should have been all along. So let's go ahead and publish for devices. We'll just uh, put this on my desktop in a regular folder, not zipped up. So let's go ahead and publish. And that was fast. And if we go ahead and view the output, let's see if it works as expected here. So there's my PDF. It brought it from the uh, library file. And of course, learners can scroll through this. Now, one thing to note, though, is that this whole um, appearance of a PDF in a browser is different from one browser to another. So if your learners are using Edge or Chrome or Firefox or Safari, the user experience might be slightly different from one browser to the next. But the important thing is, is that your learners will have access to this material. Uh, if I minimize this browser, and we'll just minimize Captivate as well, here's the folder where that was created. Inside the folder, you'll see another folder called WOR, and within that, there'll be another folder, and there's your PDF there. So it's renamed it something else, and of course, when learners download this, uh, you won't have any control of the name, but you can see that that's the actual PDF that I started out with. So uh, the important thing is that you don't really need to do very much to make this work. Uh, just follow those basic steps and you should be good to go. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.